Have you ever heard about the Coot, an amphibious kit plane? Well, I got one for sale. It's currently in Maine, but I'm going to be trucking it from Maine to Texas so we can deliver it anywhere in between. It's a pretty cool looking airplane. This is a full kit. Got the hull, wings, and a whole lot more. Just watch this video and you'll see it all. All right, so I've got the coot wings here. I've got one wing over there, one wing over there. Um, got the ailerons on them. Got the bow tip on them. Now they kind of look bad here, but it kind of it kind of washes off a little bit. They might be able to sand down and see you all know, that kind of stuff comes off. Surface. I can be able to sand that down and re-varnish it, um, but I mean it's got full spars, got all your braces, um, you can't see it on this side, but on this side got, got the tube there for the aileron. So that is the, let me see, that is the right wing, and I think this is the left wing. It's got aileron, and it's got the tube for the aileron, wing attach points, and the full and half bolt spars, ribs, and it's got the handhelds out here on the bow as well. And again, this one's got like some surface. You know, it looks bad, but kind of rub it off and it doesn't look quite as bad when you rub it down. So again, I don't know anything about a coot, but we might be able to sand that down and re-varnish it and get it back in shape. Um, I mean, everything seems strong. You know, I'm gonna try to move the ribs. But that's one full wing. And then we got another full wing over there. Let's start with what we got for the coot here. We've got, it looks like the front of the, of the cockpit, right? The forward windows, a hatch, up to the bow. Um, got a fuel tank, I think. Two seat bottoms. Um, then we've got like, I think this is the aft of the cockpit, so um, while I'm looking at it, this would be the um, aircraft right aft and aircraft left aft. Appears to be a tail cone there. There's a spinner. I believe this is an instrument panel. Got tons of... Uh, wing tips and different fairings um, here under <coughs> there's a rudder top I think I think this is the top of the rudder this piece right here and that's the top of the rudder then we've got um, you know, I'm not exactly sure what this is some fuel lines or something like that um, so this is an engine cowl so the so the, the back of the engine, since the coot is a pusher, and you can see inside there's the round fairing, and then there's the, <coughs> the cooling fan. It fits in that fan for drawing air in to cool, cool the engine. Um, this is one horizontal stabilizer. Um, it's got some skins, it looks like. Now, I don't know if these go on the wings, but there's a, there's a good number of them. Here, I can come down on this side where the light is a little better. You can see there's a, a good number of them there, skins. <clears throat> now, these, I'm not exactly sure what it is. It looks like there's two pieces that are taped together. Some type of spar there. Um, this is another horizontal stabilizer and then there is a rudder and there 
is an elevator, or excuse me, God, like I know, it's a rudder. This is the vertical stabilizer. And then the rudder. Then there's two fairings here, which I'm not exactly sure what those fairings are. Um, now this big thing here I missed was this big green, I think this is like a tail support. I think that's where the rudder goes. It's a pretty tall piece. It goes all the way up. Good standing up just for room. Um, so we got that. It's in really good shape. <clears throat> now this piece, I've got no idea what the hell this is, but I found it in a box. And it appears that there's a knob and some type of actuator down here. <clears throat> the gear crank and there's some type of movement there now I don't know much about a coot because I haven't read the books but I don't know if this is the way that you retract the landing gear but if it is it's in that box it's, um, it actually came in this box right here I pulled it out so it would be easier to see uh, this looks like a fairing that goes up for the tail um, then I've got some miscellaneous pieces here. Um, in here is a lot of stuff. So there's an IO360 downstairs, um, which I looked at. But here we've got pistons, we've got um, <coughs> pushrod tubes right here. We've got rocker covers right there. Um, piston rings, a uh, bag of lifters. We do have a logbook for the uh, IO360 Continental, so that's good. Um, in here are some different pieces of fuel injectors. Um, there's some various um, pieces here. This box here is nothing but oil. This box here is nothing but uh, fiberglass, and there's some fiberglass tape. Uh, these are all books on the Continental IO360. Like you can see, parts catalog, engineer hall, operator manuals. <clears throat> what is that? Oh, okay. superior air parts, um, <clears throat> service bulletins, oh. Taladine, and more Taladine books. So, all books about the Continental. 360. We got another box full of, oh, I don't know, these look like inspection rings. Um, this looks like an accumulator of some point, of some type. Um, nap lights. There are voltage regulators. Um, a bunch of good stuff in there. A whole nother box of different pieces here, which maybe some of you that know coots know what they are. Some kind of good stuff. Some additional wood pieces. And those, those look like what was on the wings for the main wing attach point. So maybe they go into the fuselage, possibly. I don't know, the hull. Yeah. And then we've got. You know, there's four of these. I'm not exactly sure what they are. They're, and, you know, they've got these brackets and netting on the bottom. There's a couple of uh, fiberglass, like lights, light lenses in there. Uh, so, I didn't mention this is the engine mount. I believe that this actually sits up. Sits up vertically like this to hold the IO360. Like that, so it's in great shape. Uh, you got the roof. Uh, these are all the miscellaneous glass that go into uh, the various uh, pieces. Uh, these are the doors and the glass. This is the windshield glass. Now over here, there's ton of boxes of, so what do we got there? Uh, that's upside down. <clears throat> got a uh, temperature gauge, uh, airspeed 
DG altimeter, a G meter, I don't know why you need a G meter, another airspeed, another airspeed, <laughs> a tachometer, we've got a oil pressure, or oil temperature, excuse me, uh, oil pressure, and amps. Uh, in here, so we've got two Bendix mags. Uh, these manufacture were remanufactured and inspected. That was 1976, so obviously that was quite a while ago, but they are still uh, tagged. And then there's a set of brand new, um, brand new leads for those mags. Um, here's the fuel spider. Um, you got the fuel <coughs> fuel flow divider and the lines and the high high pump, uh, the throttle body. What else have we got back here? Uh, some Lord mounts. I don't know if they're called Lord mounts on the Continental, but I can't remember. Uh, oil cooler, some more Lord mounts, uh, some various temperature probes, and extra fuel lines. I'm not sure why they're extra fuel lines because those are all the lines that go to the fuel injectors. So, I don't know. There's some of these pipes here, which I don't know if those are something to do with retracting. I mean, the ailerons are already out there, but maybe it has something to do with that. <clears throat> maybe you coop people know. That's the uh, main wheel and brake. I'm assuming that's the nose wheel. Here are rudder pedals. There, I guess this is a throttle, that thing with the black knob on it. Uh, there, we got landing gear. Looks like we've got both main landing gear legs, and there is a nose wheel uh, leg. There are gear spindles for both legs, and there are adapter plates and disc brakes. I'm not sure what this green piece is. Oh, that, that, it's a nose wheel. <clears throat> and then there's these pieces. I'm not sure what they are. Maybe you do. Then there's just a ton of parts in this box. So some extra parts in this box. Now that one baffle come off of light homing, so I'm not exactly sure why that's in there. A ton of pulleys and other things. I'm assuming these are control sticks. And maybe if I read all the manuals, I know all this stuff. <clears throat> but that's what I'm trying to learn. So, as you can see, this has been in a barn up in Maine. It's been in this dry area. Um, I mean, it's well preserved in here. Um, we've got all of this stuff here. I got the wings that I showed you earlier and next we'll go down and video the uh, the right, so, so the last piece of the coot is the hull right um, here's the hull um, it snowed a lot up here yesterday so we had it outside so we could do some other stuff in the garage here and so it got some snow in it um, now I don't know much about building a wood and fiberglass airplane. Um, it, it doesn't look beautiful to me. There's definitely some damage, like this piece here. You can kind of see, get the camera right. So it needs some fix in there. Um, you kind of see the inside of it, doesn't look great. Sort of like the wings. Um, maybe this is salvageable. I don't know. I think enough of the parts upstairs make it worth investigating. Because, like, this is probably a, a scary part, right? There's a broken piece there, but it's broken because, let me get on that side, because the top of it is loose. See this top? It's loose. Of course, that's why it's broken uh, because it wasn't affixed. Um, but 
you know, the inside of it does not look great. I don't know if that can be sanded and revarnished, and it's okay. I'm going to have to let one of you coot experts mention that. Really that. But, you know, it's got the got the two protrusions for the wings this is just leads there's leads on there um, for some reason there's some duct tape on there and uh, we use these straps to haul it in outside because <laughs> as you can see it snowed uh, doesn't really show up really well <clears throat> but that is the coupe fuselage For the coot, we've got this Continental IO360 here. You'll see a Franklin up here for the Stinson. But <clears throat> zoom in on the serial number and stuff. I'm going to hold it still. So that is the Continental IO360. It's a red seal. So I think it's been overhauled at one point. Obviously, it doesn't look overhauled right now. It does have a vacuum pump. Does have a starter and an alternator or generator, I guess, down there, and another takeoff for the mags. Um, it's got the intakes, and then upstairs, in just a minute, I'll go up and video <clears throat> what is because uh, we've got the rocker covers up there um, and the various pieces for this, plus the logbook. This also comes with a pusher Hartzell prop that's new in the box. It looks pretty sweet. One thing that's pretty interesting is this looks to be a mother load of coot building information. There's tons of blueprints and drawings, um, tons of photographs, um, these manuals. <coughs> down here. This is all about the coot newsletters. Um, more coot newsletters. Um, more drawings. Um, got everything you wanted to learn about the coot. The essential coot. The coot in a nutshell. Those are the log books for, for it. And uh, these are the pictures, I think. Some of them, not all of them. Some of them, that looks like a factory picture. Um, but some of them look like the guy who built the wings in the fuselage. Um, so a pretty well big library of coot information, uh, which should be pretty interesting uh, for new coot enthusiasts. Okay, so it's always cool going through paperwork. These are all the receipts uh, that were in the stack of paperwork. Um, interesting enough, here's the original order form. And it went to, what was his name? Anthony D'Angelo, Antonio D'Angelo. So what he ordered from the Coot kit, and at that time he paid, what, 1300 bucks. Um, what's kind of cool is <clears throat> in the pictures Sorry, it's kind of hard to get a good picture that appears to be Building the few the hall there and it is Tony D'Angelo D'Angelo Coot So there's the guy building it <clears throat> also found the information about the Hartzell, which is great um, Here is the part number and then paperwork. 